Terrific. Nick, I am ready to go. Good evening and welcome to season four of Shh Productions Vintage Radio Hour, sponsored in part by our friends at Dutch Creek Winery. Our collaboration, now grown to over 150 fantastic, 150 fantastic performers and technicians from across the country, Canada and the UK, revisits a legacy of audio entertainment that harkens back to the golden days of radio to bring you a Valentine's-themed collection of six shows filled with laughs, suspense, yes, fear, and maybe a little romance. That a top Did you not deliver to him my message? Yes, my lady. He will be here presently.
evening. Thank you for your patience, and welcome to Season 4 of Shh Productions Vintage Radio Hour, sponsored in part by our friends at Dutch Creek Winery. Our collaboration now grown to over 150 fantastic performers and technicians from across the country, Canada, and the UK, revisits the legacy of audio entertainment that harkens back to the golden days of radio to bring you a Valentine's-themed collection of six shows filled with laughs, suspense, fear, and maybe a little romance. The upcoming show, Richard Diamond, Private Detective, Lonely Heart, originally airing in 1951, features the cast of David Allen Vargo, Lorelai Moore, Nick Martin, Ariel Anders, Wolf Sherrill, Alicia Reidman, Kat Cryan, Ken Ernie, Allison Leonard, William Hafner, Chip Barr, and Don Farrell, in a story about how love comes in all shapes and sizes, and how our intrepid gumshoe can help unravel some of love's more tricky surprises. We're so glad you're joining us for our final show of season four, Love is on the Air. Now, shh. <laughs> Diamond Detective Agency, your pain is our pleasure. Why don't you sell that to Dr. Kildare? Eh, that's where I bought it, and he assured me it had never been used on radio. <laughs> that in itself should have given you a clue. Everything in the world has been used, including me. Hi, Helen. Hi. Man? You'll either come out to my place tonight... Or... Or it's going to be off-limits to enlisted private eyes, as of 1900 this night. Helen, I'll be there tonight. Come anything you can think of. Oh, I want her. I'm going to hold another boyfriend in reserve, just in case. Oh, what a waste of manpower. You'll see. All right. I'll give you one more chance. But if you don't make it this time, you might as well call up a Lonely Hearts agency the next time you want a date. Well, as it just happens, I was about to contact a Lonely Hearts agency. Right now? In a matter of minutes, my dear. Oh, Rick. I take it all back. You can come anytime you want, and I'll welcome you with open arms. I'm sorry I said anything. That's uh, not what you think, baby. This is business. I'll explain it all when I get there. Uh-oh. Here he is now. Who? My client. Come in. <sighs> Bye, Helen. I'll see you at nine. I'll bet my bottom Cadillac you won't. Have the title transferred, honey. You're sure to lose. Bye. Bye. Mr. Diamond? Yes, uh, Mr. Dickinson? Call me Ralph. You were uh, pretty excited when you talked with me on the phone this morning. Well, it's just that I hate to be taken for a rube. And brother, have I been taken? You said you were from Maine, is that right? Winter Harbor, Maine. Couple of hundred people, everybody fishes, including me. But I make a few extra bucks running a lobster pound. What in the world is that? It's sort of a sea pen, when you keep lobsters alive until the market price is right. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, tell me about the girl. It was her letters. They were so wonderful. Well, I couldn't believe I was being fleeced until it hit me right in the face like a dead codfish. I think I'd better take notes. Why don't you start from the beginning? Well, in Winter Harbor, a good-looking girl is as hard to find as an orange on a fir tree. As soon as they realize they got something, they leave town. Well, I was so busy lobster fishing to pay for my first boat, I missed all my chances. Mm, I see. So I ran across a magazine that had some ads in it. Said there were a lot of people in the country. Lonely, beautiful young girls. And you bit. Hook, line, and lobster trap, shall we say? What would you have done? I sent them ten bucks and got back a list of names. I wrote to all of them, and one of them that answered from New York here sent her picture. Uh, look at it, here. Mmm, beautiful. She wrote the most wonderful letters anybody ever wrote to anybody. I couldn't sleep nights thinking about her. Yeah, well, I hate to shatter your dreams, but this picture happens to be of a movie star, June Allison. It's a sense she didn't write the letters. How do you know? I know her husband, and he senses her mail. Well, I asked her to marry me. She said yes. And she asked you to send her some money. One thousand dollars. For clothes and transportation. 
You know how long it takes to make a thousand dollars fishing in Maine? A thousand years? You're a couple of hundred short. Sure. Anyway, when she didn't show up, I wrote. No answer. So I came. No girl at no address like that. I took the hook and they reeled me in. Why do you want to find her? To marry her or get the money back? If I can get the money, I'll take it. Less my fee. Oh, yeah, yeah, understood. Anyway, I just couldn't live with myself thinking of how I'd been skinned. I need the satisfaction of getting even. You find her and throw her in jail if you have to. What was her name? Elsie McGill. What was the name of the agency that sent you the list? The Metropolitan Romance Bureau. Here, here's the clipping. How long do you think it will take you, Mr. Diamond? With luck, a year. But I'll try to hurry things up for you. I knew I'd have to start with the agency, but I realized that I'd have to go at them obliquely. I knew a stranded Western singing group, the Riders of the Purple Subway, and I borrowed a Western outfit from one of them, complete with ten-gallon hat and high-heeled boots. I fell three times in the first block trying to use them, and finally switched to crepe-soled sneakers. I stopped at a jewelry store for a twenty-five-cent diamond stick pin, you should excuse the word, and then at a gas station to spill some twenty-weight oil on my lapel. And brother, I was ready. I found the Metropolitan Romance Bureau on the third floor of the Fairchild Building. It was a small but impressive office with a receptionist who was large and impressive. May I help you to something, sir? Uh, uh, <clears throat> I, I, I don't trust myself to answer that, ma'am. You're blushing. Oh, reckon I am. First, I thought it was because my socks wasn't sanforized, but now I know it's because you're the prettiest thing I've seen since my first glass of beer. Where are you from, and what's your name? Harold Applenock is my handle. Howdy. And uh, I'm from Oklahoma. The play or the state? Oh, the original company, out west, I'll have you know, ma'am. <laughs> well, sir, what can I do for you? Well, the truth is, ma'am, I heard this is a lonely hearts agency. I'm lonely, and I thought maybe I could meet someone through you. Oh, I'm sorry, but this is strictly an agency that works through the mail. That's all we're licensed to do. Oh, well, that that's too bad. I've got a lot of oil money that's just burning a hole in my suitcase. You mean your pocket? Oh, no. I could only get a few thousand of it in my pocket. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. It's a really a shame. I, I sure would like to spend it on some gal. Well, thanks for your friendliness. Uh, j just a minute. Maybe I can fix things up for you. It's Mr. Santino. He's head of the bureau. Oh, thank you, ma'am. I sure got myself a lonely heart. While she was in the office calling the inner guy, I took a roll of stage money, what else, out of my pocket and began thumbing through it. And I was ushered into Mr. Santino's office before I counted to ten. He was small and wiry and greeted me like a brother elk. All the way from Oklahoma, huh? Oh, that's right, sir, in my 16-cylinder covered wagon. <laughs> a jokester. I can see that right away. Drink? Oh, oh no, no, no thanks. No, I, I carry my own jugs of Oklahoma water. <laughs> what business are you in? All. Quarts or gallons? Barrels. You don't say. Well now, let's sit down and talk over your little problem. I take it you are lonely and in search of feminine companionship? Oh, you can see right through me. <laughs> Lonesomeness is pretty hard to hide, I guess. Yes, it is the scourge of our society. Millions of people passing each other on the streets and never speaking, keeping their unhappy little lives all tied up within themselves. It's a tragedy which we attempt to alleviate in our own little way. Can you alleviate mine? I'm required to ask you this, but just what are your intentions? You know what I mean. Oh, strictly honorable, Mr. Santino. I'm looking for a soulmate. Marriage is my intention, sir. That's the answer I wanted. Now let's get down to business. 
And we did. I forked over $50, which I could ill afford, and then we settled down to look over some prospects. He finally came up with one Candy Cooper, whom he described as a ravishing beauty, who was so lonesome she sat home in her penthouse apartment nights with nothing better to do than her laundry. I found this hysterically incredible. But when we actually met later that day at a swank restaurant for dinner, I realized that my understanding of incredible was painfully limited. She was something right off the cover, a cosmopolitan, in six colors and five dimensions. Even if I couldn't prove the fifth, I could see it. Wonderful of you to go to all this trouble taking me out to dinner. Oh, if this is trouble, I should have been in it long ago. <laughs> the big city can be so lonesome at times. Oh, I know, yes. Times like 5.30 in the morning, or when you have smallpox. <laughs> you don't seem to believe me. Oh, Candy, I'll bet they could make a human carpet out of the men who beat their way to your door every night. Not so many as you'd think. And the ones who do come are opportunists. Can you blame them? Beauty can have its drawbacks, too, you know. Men are afraid of you. Sometimes I wish I'd been born plain. Candy, honey, beauty is about the one thing left they don't tax. Don't knock it. Tell me something. Sure. Before you ask, I got more money in the bank than the two of us could count. That isn't what I was going to ask. I'd like you if you didn't have a cent. Oh, the curse of wealth. <laughs> Are you really interested in finding a girl to marry? That's my whole aim in life. I just want somebody who's willing to come back to Oklahoma with me, sit on the back porch, and watch those poor little old pumps bring up that oil. <laughs> After we finish dinner, would you like to go back up to my apartment for a drink? This evening's broadcast of Shh Productions Vintage Radio Hour is brought to you in part by Dutch Creek Winery, located in the beautiful, verdant countryside of Athens, Ohio. Visit their new tasting room, located in the hills of southeastern Ohio, and stop in to enjoy their amazing artisanal small batch meads, ciders, and fruit wines, the best Athens has to offer. Spend a relaxing afternoon in their tasting room or newly enclosed patio, a warm place to relax and enjoy your wine selection, expertly paired with a house-made snack or charcuterie tray. And don't forget to ask for their wines at your favorite local retailer. They also ship. Visit them at 12157 State Route 690, just eight miles outside Athens, Ohio, on their website at DutchCreekWinery.com, Facebook, or Instagram for more information about their events and current offerings. And now, Back to our feature presentation. It would be painfully obvious and a waste of time to include my answer here. Suffice it to say, I found a reckless taxi driver who crossed town so fast the meter showed he owed me money. She lived in the Welton Arms. The decor of her apartment was out of next month's town and country. Her shelves were lined with intelligent books, and there was a couple of college diplomas on the wall. Oh, and her bar. <laughs> that was, I am sure, borrowed from the Aster for the night. You can have anything in the place. Oh, honey, I'd trade everything for a warm look from you. <laughs> How's that? Oh, well, <clears throat> do you have any liquid starch? I'd like to fix my collar. <laughs> oh, you're great. Do you know what I think? I couldn't guess. You know, there's something about you that I really like. And I'm sorry that we had to meet this way. Well, what's wrong with this? Oh, I wish it could have been some small town on a summer night. And you walking me home from a band concert or a dance and... Oh, why go on? Mm, that was pretty good copy, Kathy. Do you mind if I play a record? It's my favorite. Oh, go right ahead. You I wish I knew the words. Laughing at I me. Knew. I uh, 
pretty genuine to me, and I figured either she didn't know what she was doing or she was using a new angle in an old racket. And while she was out of the room, I recovered somewhat and gave her apartment a fast once-over. My recovery was complete when I found stacks of letters to and from Lonely Hearts clients in her desk. I pocketed as many as possible. Then I settled back with a camel just before she returned. She cried a little, but did no talking. I finally left, dropped by the office, put the letters in my safe, and spent a half hour on the phone with Helen explaining where I'd been. She was very understanding. I don't believe one word of it. So I went home and went to bed. The next morning, I was coming down the corridor to my office, and I met Bridgie, the scrub woman. Hey, Ricky boy. Ah, ah, ah. Don't slip in the water. Morning, Bridgie. Hey, how's the pinup of the fourth floor? Oh, there's nothing wrong with my looks that a few years wouldn't fix. <laughs> but unfortunately, they've already passed. Ah, go on. If I were a few years older, you'd be just the thing for me. Want me to scare you and tell you I'll wait? <laughs> All right, Lonnie, let's talk about something else. Tell me, uh, how are the bass drum lessons coming? Oh, I'm off the bass drum now. The vibrations upset my stomach. Besides, I've taken up softball now. You're kidding. Oh, does that dumb look like I'm kidding? Oh. I'm on the Roundhouse Girls softball team. Five wins, two losses. Better than the Red Sox, and they've got men. Well, what do you play? Catcher. I'm a regular Yogi Barrel. You're the only catcher in town with built-in padding. <laughs> oh, just for that, I've a mind not to tell you about the two men went into your office. When, dear? Ten minutes ago. And outside of an umpire, they're the meanest looking men I've ever seen. Thanks, Bridgie. If you need any help, just call me. I'll bring my Louisville slugger. Good morning, Diamond. Who are you? Uh, Connie's my you name. That? They call my friend there Jumbo. He don't talk, except with his hands. <laughs> Am I supposed to turn white or something? I hear you're a great actor, Diamond. Make a specialty of western parts, oil men and such. Yeah, sorry, I'm all booked up. Santino don't like to have his letters stolen off his dames. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Jumbo. Now, Diamond, I guess we open up your safe and get the letters, huh? I'm not much of a morning fighter. And besides, I was overmatched. Anybody would have been with Jumbo, and that's all the excuse I'm going to offer. Needless to say, I gave him the letters. I'd already read them anyway. They mussed up my office a little just for fun. Placed a long-distance call to Yokohama and charged it to me. I ordered a 12-foot good luck horseshoe of flowers from a nearby florist and charged it to me. And then left me sitting there. Diamond Detective Agency, blue eyes, now black. This is Candy, Mr. Diamond. Oh, sweet of you to call. Listen, somebody recognized you last night and they're going to be after you. They want the letters back. Now why should you tell me this? Because I like you, stupid. Now burn those letters and get out of your office. And if you want to give me some help, I could sure use it. Yeah, what kind of help? I want to get out of this town. Oh, help me. I'll do anything to repay you. I'll be right over. Get rid of those letters first, and then you... Oh, no! Santino! No! Get away from me! Candy! Candy! 
I got over to her apartment as fast as I could. Her apartment door was locked, so I sprung it. There wasn't a soul in the place, anywhere, or any sign of a struggle. I got out of there and beat it over to the Metropolitan Romance Bureau, with blood in my eye and a chip on my shoulder as big as a redwood tree. And I don't expect you to believe it, but... There was no Metropolitan Romance Bureau. The name was scraped off the door, and the office suite was empty. A half hour later, I was telling the whole story to Lieutenant Walt Levinson. And a half hour after that, we were all gathered in Candy Cooper's apartment at the Western Arms. Walt had been quizzing the manager, George McSorley, and a girl named Edna Chambers, who said she lived in the apartment and she'd never heard of Candy Cooper. Confused? Well, why should I be the only one? What do you mean, telling the police about a moiety at my place? What, are you crazy or something? I'm not crazy, Miss Chambers. I was here last night with a girl named Candy Cooper in this apartment. She called me from here today, and somebody shot her. Listen, mister, I don't know what your angle is, but this happens to be my apartment, and you were definitely not in it last night. If you had been, my boyfriend would have tossed you out on your ear, because he was here too, you know. Now... How long have you lived here, young lady? Almost a year. You heard what the manager said. Oh, don't bother, Walt. It's rigged against us. Why don't you shut him up? Look, I got records to prove it. And I tell you again, I never heard of no candy whatever her name was. Uh, Rick... There isn't much I can do here. We need more than your word. Okay, Fatty. Homicide is your chestnut, not mine. Now, who said there was a homicide? All you told us about was a shot and a scream. And over the phone at that. Uh, are you sure you didn't see this thing at a seance or something? All right. If you want to be a blockhead. Uh, nobody's being a blockhead. I'm talking about facts. You give me something, and I'll use it. Here, try my gun. Hmm. The gang was organized like an army, and I realized I would need careful tactics to get anywhere. I reasoned that if they had a lucrative mail order business going, they wouldn't drop it cold. So I paid a visit to the post office department. Yeah, here's the card. They gave a change of address. The Metropolitan Romance Bureau now receives its mail at Post Office Box 32976. Yeah, 32976. Yeah, say, you must be real hard up for romance, buddy. Go cancel a stamp, and thank you. It was late in the afternoon when an old enemy of mine slid up to box 32976 and opened it with a key. His name was Jumbo, and it was all I could do to keep from punching him right there. Instead, I followed him, and it was a long drive, north out of town, toward Connecticut. My quarry finally pulled up at a brown-shingled house on Anthony Street, number 1216, and went in. I took up a station at the end of the block, but when nothing further happened, I went back into town to do some check-in from the office. Hello? Uh, this is Ralph Dickinson, Mr. Diamond. Did you find out anything yet? Well, Ralph, I haven't gotten your money back as yet, but I know a lot more than I did yesterday. For example? For example, I don't think that the girl you sent your money and your love to was a girl. Huh? I think your letter came from a man named Santino, or one of his secretaries. Is that right? Well, Mr. Diamond, just tell me where he is. I'll handle it from here. I think it's going to take both of us. Why don't you come down to my office? Right now I have to check on an address and a license number. Be right down. And I want some action. company told me that the phone at 1216 Anthony Street was under the name of George Santino. 
The police told me that the license number I'd copied down of the car I'd followed was under the same name, same address. Ralph Dickinson arrived, and the two of us drove out there. I told him to station himself at the back door while I went in the front. Yes? What is it you want, young man? George Santino. Is he in? George what, Tino? Santino. That with an S? With an S. Never heard of him. Oh, don't give me that. He lives here. Since when? How should I know? I've been here since they built the place. 1912. I never seen no George Lamino. Had a car Mafino once rooming. Oh, swell. <clears throat> Maybe I want a room. May I come in and look around? You may not. This is my home, my private home. I don't like the look in your eye, sneaky. Are you Santino's mother? <laughs> I'll, I'll have you know I was never married. My name's Hester Thompson, miss. Well, Hester, I hate myself for doing this, but one side. You, you, you can't come in here. I'll call the police. I just did, and I dare you to. I want to look around. Oh, all right. You have forced me to defend my honor and my castle. She reached into an umbrella stand and pulled out a sawed-off shotgun. I dived behind a sofa, and the stuffing caught the full blast of the rock salt it was loaded with. Before she could reload, I grabbed her and tied her up. Then I looked around the house. There was no sign of anybody, George Santino or his friends, just the effects and furnishings of a little old lady. I was just about to turn myself into the police for forcing an entry, assault, etc., when I noticed the garage outside. It was a double with rooms over it, and all the shades were drawn. I had a talk with my teammate Dickinson. I think they're in there, huh? Where else? Now look, I'm going in the garage. If I find the same car I followed yesterday, I'll go upstairs. And then I'm going with you. I wouldn't have it any other way. It was the same car, all right. And we started tiptoeing up a long flight of stairs inside the garage to a doorway at the top. When we were one step away from it, we kicked it open and dived through. Nothing. No George Santino or friends. But in the next room, trussed up, gagged up, and tied to a chair, a frightened and hysterical Candy Cooper stared at us with big eyes. He took the gag out of her mouth. Rick! Oh, Rick! Easy, honey, easy. You're all right. I thought you'd been killed. I almost was, but look! What? Oh, Who's this guy, Mr. Diamond? A letter-writing expert, name of George Santino. How'd it happen, Candy? I was talking to you on the phone when George walked in. He was mad because I was going to tell you about the whole racket. He had a gun and, and he threatened me. I, I threw the telephone book at him and, and the gun went off. Jumbo and that other man brought me here. We're a Jumbo and friend now. Out, getting a doctor. It's too late for a doctor for this guy, Mr. Diamond. He's dead. Oh, no. Oh, I knew he was going to die. I just knew it. Yeah, let it all out, honey. We'll have some cops here to meet him when they come back. And me, too? Oh, no. You know what you need, honey? Is a good husband and a nice home. Where would I find that? Nobody would have me. Nobody. Come here, come here. I have a surprise for you. A guy named Ralph Dickinson. Oh, by the way, do you like lobster? Well, what a silly question. It's my favorite food. Another drink, Rick? No, Helen, honey, one's enough. Your beauty is intoxication itself. Oh, I'll bet I didn't look anything like her. Well, she was different, but you're both U.S. grade A.
but you kissed her. All in the line of duty. <laughs> What's going to happen to her? Well, before the week is out, I guess she'll become Mrs. Ralph Dickinson. Mm, what a fortunate girl. I wish I had somebody who would ask me. All right. I will. Rick. Really? Sure. How'd you like to become Mrs. Ralph Dickinson? <laughs> oh, you double crossing! Come here! Come here, closer now. There. That help? Oh, Rick. Was that in the line of duty? That, Helen, was strictly on my own time. Thank you to our wonderful performers, our amazing production managers, Barb Shoulders and Nick Martin, our sponsor, Dutch Creek Winery, and to you, our audience. We hope you enjoy the show and the season. Keep an eye on our Facebook and Instagram pages for information about season five and visit us here on YouTube or on WCBE's podcast experience for episodes you might have missed. Until next time. Shh.